Good evening, or whatever time, I am going to play Super Mario Brothers and talk to you about video games. Okay? My top five, in fact. Doing a lot of thinking about it. A little thinking. Not a lot. Let's be honest. I'm not a lot. I haven't been sitting around thinking about video games all day long. Mostly um, Tears of the Kingdom, the new Zelda. But, uh, I'm going to play some Mario Brothers while I go through my list. And here's... I, I, at one time, let's turn this down a little bit. I um, I have a Wheezy Gamer channel, which is pretty much defunct now. I think if I play play games, I might just do it on this channel. Um, this is Wheezy News, by the way, in case you're wondering if you're watching my main channel. Um, and at one time, I started playing this game with the intention of continuing to play until I made it through the whole thing without dying, without warping. Because I have done that once before. And I have a witness. My friend Matt was there when I did it. Not when I was little, when it was when I was playing it a lot when I was a kid, but when I was like 25 or so, 26 or something. Um, oh, I have like a turbo button on my controller because I'm just holding down the B button and it keeps shooting firepower. That was not intentional. Oh well. Um, okay. Um, like a, a rapid fire button or something. I did not mean for that to happen. Anywho, um, I might do that again, right here on this channel. I might just go ahead and, uh, uh, but, but also just talk about random stuff while I'm doing it. So I won't even be focused very much, which will mean I'll probably screw up even more and it'll take longer. Just keep doing it over and over until... I until I make it all the way through without dying, without warping. It's not easy. It's very not easy. In fact, it gets real hard towards the end, and that'll be really frustrating when that happens. But you know what? You live, you learn. And it'll also start to probably take a long time, which might make it harder for me to do these videos. Uh, but why not? Let's, let's see what we can do. I'm at least going to do it this time. <laughs> I'm going to see how far I make it. Oh, that's annoying that it keeps shooting firepower while I'm holding down the B button. I'm holding down the B button so that I can run fast, but it's shooting firepower while doing that. Hmm. Hmm. Well, okay. Um, I mean, it's kind of useful, but that's not really how you're supposed to play, right? Uh, so, um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. So, anyway, I'm going to try to do that. Maybe. Maybe I will. I will I'm, not every video on here is going to be me playing Mario. But occasionally I'll drop in and be like, hey, can I do it without dying without warping again? And the only time I'll play will be for these videos. So I won't be getting any extra practice in. I still got it. I've made it to level three without dying. So I think we're doing okay. Actually, you know what it was? Yeah, okay. I made it through the game without dying, without warping. But I was trying to make it through the game without getting hit at all which I didn't do. I think I got hit like the last, one of the last few levels. Um, so I didn't, I didn't do it without getting hit. I think I'd like to try that. That's, that seems real hard. My light is flickering. Do you see that? Why is my light flickering? That's annoying. There's a lot of things going wrong, guys. Um, anyway, top five. A lot of you just probably clicked for that and I'm taking a long time to get there. All right, we'll do top five. Um, and it's, here's the thing. Uh, Ah, oh well, we're not gonna make it through without getting hit. Um, uh, these are this top five is you can tell I'm from a certain era. Um, these are mostly old games. There's one game that's newer, and by newer I mean the aughts. Um, well, no, there's one that's much newer, but uh, and you probably know what it is. Oh, oh. Ah, I died already. I died already. Well, starting over. Um, mm -hmm. No, I'm not going to start over. Not this time. We're just going to we're just going to play it, play it out this time because I don't even have time because it's almost time for bedtime for Ada and China's giving her a bath right now. Um, and I'm doing bedtime. We trade off every night, but. Uh, Oh my god. Yeah, this is gonna be rough going, guys. I'm a little rusty. I'm a little rusty. This is the first time I've played this in many years. 
probably the last time was in that gamer channel, which was many years ago. Um, but I'm gonna get good again, guys. It's in there. It's in me. Uh, ooh, it does take a little concentration. So these games are older. These games are games that I that affected me personally. I mean, it's a personal list. These are games that I've thought about more than other games. Technically, I'll, most of these do make it on like top 100 lists of video games. Um, they skew older. Final Fantasy 3, which is Final Fantasy 6 in Japan. Um, I don't know what the kids call it these days, but it was the last one on the Super Nintendo. I played that a lot. I remember logging like 99 hours or so on the game, which was, it was the only game, the first game I played that actually tracked how long you're playing and probably not the longest, to be honest with you, of games that I played, uh, but very long for, for me at the time. Um, and it's just a good game. Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy VII is real good, the one after that. I played that a lot too. It kinda, and then I played eight, but it kind of lost me after that. I played nine. I think I, I might have played nine to the end actually, but I barely remember it. Three though, or six, whatever you want to call it. It just really got me. Like uh, the story, even though they were little sprites, the story just drew me in and I cared so deeply at, to, about finding every about everything about the game. There was mystery around some of the characters and multiple endings. And it was like the first time I'd experienced something like that. And it was very, very exciting and I couldn't stop playing. And then next on the list, next up, Shadow of the Colossus. Uh, this game I played in my 20s. It was a newer game and I was not that in, as into video games anymore, but that one drew me in and reminded me of how great video games were. And what's so cool about it is how minimal it is. You're going around a whole map as if it were like an open world, like like Breath of the Wild or something, but with like nothing in it. It's like, it, it's pretty empty and dreary, except that you find these giant colossuses, colossi colossuses, that are basically the levels in the game where you have to figure out how to defeat them. Um, and it drew me in pretty hard, and I love the story. It was beautiful, it's just the mood of it. The guy also made a game called Ico, which I also really liked, and uh, The Last Guardian, also awesome. I can't remember the, the guy's name. But I played all of those. Uh, Shadow of the Colossus is my favorite. And oh, I got hit again. Um, but I'm just good. And then we'll go up again. Uh, this one, many, some of you might not have heard of, but, uh, well, a lot of you probably have. Day of the Tentacle, the sequel to Maniac Mansion. A computer game, it was a LucasArts game made by Tim Schafer, who did Psychonauts, and there's a whole documentary about Tim Schafer making Psychonauts and doing a crowdfunding for that. That was after Day of the Tentacle. He, he worked for Lucasfilm, or LucasArts, when he did Day of the Tentacle. And there are several LucasArts games I really liked, but Day of the Tentacle was the first one I played. It's a point-and-click adventure, and it's cartoony, it's hilarious, it's time travel. And my friend had it, and I'd always come over and play it over and over again, and I loved it. And then after that, Sam and Max, I played that a lot. And Grim Fandango, also in the same vein, point-and-click story adventure. Uh, funny, but engaging story. I loved it, and I haven't... I haven't been able to get into a point-and-click adventure since it as, since that one. Oh no! Oh, since that one as much. I talked a big game at the beginning of this. How great I was once at this game. Um, also, the controls are slightly different. I'm playing it on the computer, but um, oh, uh, so. Ooh. Ooh. Um, anyway, what was I saying? Oh, 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 oof. Ugh. Mm. So, Tim Schafer, Day of the Tentacle, hilarious, point and click adventure, engaging, real good. And then um, we'll go with uh, 
There's a little game called Super Mario Brothers. You heard of it? This one. I played, this is the first Nintendo game I played. It's the first time I really, I, I played Atari when it came out. I played a lot of Pac-Man and Frogger, but this is the first like, you know, real video game, come on, uh, that I played. And it is, uh, it, it, I was like, I was uh, hypnotized by it. When I first played it, I was at my uncle's house, he had it. And I played it for like, I don't know, six hours straight. Oh my God, couldn't stop. Because we didn't have it at home, so I just, I just, I had to get it all in. And apparently I got a blister on the back of my thumb. I still, to this day, we don't know how that hap is possible. Ah, oh man, I'm really rusty, guys. Oh God, I'm sorry. Oh no. Ugh, this is, this is it's gonna, I got a lot of work to do. Um, but, uh, especially talking about something else instead of focusing on it. But um, this game I have logged many, many hours in and I, this game comes from an era when you couldn't save the game. So that's how you get really good at it. And that's how you, uh, like the incentive to get good is because you want to play more of the game. You want to see the next level. When you get to the next level, it takes longer to get to the next level and the next level. And, the, and then when you beat the game, oh my God, the satisfaction of beating this game was enormous because it was, you couldn't save it. You had to start at the beginning every time. And um, it's just, it's like when I think of the quintessential video game, this is the one. It's like the basic controls. It's the, it's, it nailed the basics of a platformer, side-scrolling platformer. You can't, I mean, you can't really, I mean, you can do better. People have gone on, I guess, technically to do games that are better, technically. Uh, but, I mean, some would say Super Mario World is the better one of these. But this one is, has a uh, special place in my heart because of how many hours I logged with it. I have more, I just have more connection to this. I, In fact, as I got older, I haven't really had mu as much a connection to any games besides these early ones. Um, and maybe it's just a product of what you're playing when you're a kid. There's a extra guy here somewhere. I don't remember where it is, but it's right. And it's not always here. It depends on things. Um, whoop. But this is this game like obsessed. And when Super Mario 2 came out, I was oh my god, the anticipation. I, I never wanted anything more in my life. And I liked, and I played Super Mario 2 a lot. I loved it, but looking back, this is the this is the real one, you know. Um, and then, um, ooh, ooh. Uh, let's move on. Okay, so number one, I'm cheating. I'm cheating here a little bit. I, here's what I want to put at number one. Okay, this is where you can get like a bunch of guys if you do the trick of hitting it. I'm not gonna do it. I lost the skill. Anyway, um, but that was how we ended up beating the game. You get like as many guys as you want by jumping on the turtle and bouncing it bouncing back and then you start getting extra guys. Um, I cheated and I kind of made two at the top because I can't really separate them. The original Legend of Zelda and Breath of the Wild. <laughs> like I think like in my heart, it's the original Legend of Zelda. And that's what I originally put, and then I and then I listed off all these other games you heard. But then I'm like, well, I can't not put Breath of the Wild on there, because that is also one of my favorite games, and it would be in my top five. But I can't put both Zeldas in the top five. That's what I that was my thinking, even though I'm sure it'd be fine. So I'm just putting them both at number one. They're tied in my mind. They're the same, because actually I would say Breath of the Wild captured the uh, feeling of the original more than any of the other games. I mean, Link to the Past pretty close, I suppose, but um, I feel like the original game felt a little more open world than um, that game uh, in, in a weird way. I don't know, uh, it, fe it felt like, I don't know, when you were a kid and you were playing the original Zelda, the first one like that, the first game like that, you had to go to your friend's house, you had to trade secrets and discover 
all these secrets by yourself and just explore the world without any guide, pretty much. Like all the levels are hidden throughout the game. There's really no, you just had to search for them. <laughs> you just had to go searching. Uh, and I logged so many hours in that game and I, uh, it gave me a certain feeling that no other game ever has, but Breath of the Wild came kind of close um, and is just technically a masterpiece. Um, I'm such a Nintendo fanboy, gosh. Like, I don't really have a lot, I don't really have first person shooters on my list or any multiplayer games or this is just the kind of games I'm into, I guess. This is what I grew up with. Um, and yeah, I never really got into online games so much, like multi multiplayer um, RPGs Ooh. as much. Um, but that's my list. And I have several runners up. Oh, a little, little stutter there. Ah, wow. Um, Hollow Knight. Over the pandemic, I played that in an enormous amount. Super Metroid, which is Hollow Knight is heavily inspired by. Um, some runners up. Uh, Final Fantasy VII. Um, Tears of the Kingdom, I didn't put it on the list because it's too new. Can't, can't make the top five yet. Ocarina of Time and other Zelda games, Super Mario 64, Six, Super Mario World, SimCity 2000, Space Quest. <laughs> I used to play the King's Quest and Space Quest games. I liked Space Quest more because it was funnier. Um, the C old Sierra. Um, they're not point and click adventures like uh, typing adventures, like the rudimentary version of point and click adventures. Um, it was just fun to type and figure out what you could type that it would respond to. <laughs> um, and then later there were point and click versions of it. Um, and, uh, Grim Fandango, which I mentioned, which is LucasArts, point and click, really great story, loved it. Um, the Last Guardian, which I mentioned, same guy, oh my god, I died again. Same guy who did, uh, oh my god, I didn't, game over, ugh. Ugh, Grim, Last Guardian, you're, you're this little, you're a guy guiding this gigantic mm, cat bird beast, and it's, um, um, same guy who did Shadow of the Colossus, real good. Katamari Damacy, ball rolling and getting bigger and bigger. That's just a ridiculous game. Just, I didn't play it a ton, I suppose, but I liked it. Um, there's a little game called Tetris. Logged a lot of time on Game Boy on that. Stardew Valley, also a pandemic game I picked up and was obsessed with for a little while. It reminded me that I can still be obsessed with video games, much like Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom did. And <laughs> Sneaky Sasquatch. It's, an, it's a game on on the iPad, basically, that I, I downloaded because it, for Ada, because I thought it looked like a fun kids game, but it turns out it's like a fun open world, similar, kind of similar to like a Stardew Valley sort of game where it's like pretty open what you can do, but there is more of a story and more of an objective and you're a Sasquatch you know, at a campground and you're going around and you're like stealing people's food and stuff. It's stupid fun. Like, and then it gets, it gets bigger, like in scope than you expect. And I liked it. Um, those are my games right now on my mind. Oh, there's other games. I mean, I like a lot of other games that I just haven't mentioned, like Grand Theft Auto. Like I liked Grand Theft Auto, Vice City. I played all the way to the end. I guess they're just, they're good, but for some reason they don't, they don't capture my heart like these games do, you know? Um, that's it. I'm going to get better at this Mario. We're going to, maybe, hopefully I keep doing this and we watch me grow as a Super Mario player again, like I once did. I don't know. I feel like I could, I could do a lot better than I just did. Probably would require a little more focus though. Anyway. Have a good one. Oh, again, if you haven't checked out Two Guys Talking About Lettuce, a podcast I do with Greg, we're still getting close to a thousand subscribers so that we can apply to be partner. I actually haven't even checked today though. Let's see, what are we at? Um, two Guys Talking About Lettuce. 
Is it maybe? Oh, 983? Are you kidding me? We're stupid close. Okay. Um, um, and um, that's about it. Put up a new newsletter today, if I put this up on the day that I shot it. Tuesday, May 23rd. Okay. Bye. I might put it up tomorrow, this one. I don't know.